Hey guys, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program! My name is Twitchy and this is my final career mode! Kerbal Space Program has dropped its final update of 1.12 and there are no more major features to come in the future. So this, for me, sounds like the perfect opportunity to do my last career mode in Kerbal Space Program 1. This is a very lightly modded version of Kerbal Space Program. I have the Kerbal operating system if I ever get around to wanting to do a little bit of automation. I also have the texture replacer so I can have some custom Kerbals. We have her final frontier. It'll keep track of all the Kerbal's achievements. And of course, one of the big things with the Kerbal 1.12 is that they now include the Kerbal alarm clock, something that I've been saying should be in stock since the very beginning of the game. Anyway, it is time to have a look at our first contract. We are going to go and do some science. Traditionally at this point, I believe Squad wanted you to launch a rocket, but being the ethical space program that we are, we cannot send untrained Kerbals out there. So not only are we going to send our Kerbals out to do a first batch of science, but we need to test them in a centrifuge type device to make sure they can withstand the G-forces that they are under. One of the settings you may have seen me enable when I was configuring the save file was to turn on the G limits for both Kerbals and parts. Not only is this just a great idea anyway, I mean, I just like the idea of not well, of making your Kerbals pass out if you are a little bit too harsh on the controls, but it also opens up a bunch of contracts for taking tourists on high G adventures where you get to make them pass out. It's great fun. The mission was a great success, so much so that I was able to get my first two tiers of technology. Going through to the mission control though, we did not meet all the requirements for our first contract. Indeed, we needed to launch the craft into the air. Who knew that they were going to be so specific? Anyway, the mission worked so well that before making my first rocket, I decided we're going to do it again. We're going to take Bob the Scientist and Valentina the Pilot back out to the runway because there is a runway to do science from and there is the grasslands to do science from. And somehow, rolling off the side of the runway counted as launching our first craft into the air. Huzzah! With the completing of the contract and the gathering of the science, we finally have enough resources to be able to get ourselves some decouplers. And with that technology, I feel like I'm finally able to build us a rocket. Normally, I would be showing a lot more of the build process here, but I was having a little bit of trouble whilst recording. Uh, you may have noticed that I play my, my footage back uh, quite fast, and unfortunately, the music just kept on playing, even though I turned the slider down in the settings. So unfortunately, you're going to have to make do with this poor quality footage and my explanation that we've made a top stage out of three fuel tanks and a swivel engine and then basically strapped a whole bunch of solid boosters underneath before putting a scientist on top because you know scientists do the best science and the early game of Kerbal is all about getting that science in to unlock the tech tree it's kind of the early part of the game uh, so we are just going up because I don't have a pilot on board we are just gonna go up we're gonna burn all our solid fuel going up and we're gonna save the liquid stage for the top if I didn't save that liquid stage we would be coming straight back down and there is not enough atmosphere between me and the ground to slow us down enough so we need to be going sideways so that when we're going through the atmosphere we are losing most of our speed whilst going sideways and then uh, have enough time to react and lower our parachute. One of the things that is a bit of a problem with the scientist, he has no pointing choice. He has no autopilot. My man Bob uh, here there doing his best, but because of the lack of SAS, he has trouble keeping orientation in space. So I like to keep a little spin stabilization. Works in Kerbal just as it does in real life. Re-entry is hot and sharp. In contrast to being under the parachute, which is long and tedious. I have long claimed this to be the most boring part of Kerbal, but we're down anyway. Bob, uh, Bob's going to do a little bit more science just to make sure we can really get the tech that we are after. The technology that's probably going to have the biggest impact on our space program is going to be the solid fuel thump booster. One of the more powerful ones out there and with great power comes great problems. It weighs a lot. It weighs like a ridiculous amount. We're only allowed to lift 18 tons and that is just, that's ridiculous. Now I could spend time just trying to tweak down all the levels of the fuel in here, try and get the perfect Bands, but I think instead we're going to come out to the space center screen and we are going to upgrade our launch pad It's the first thing that I always upgrade it allows us to lift more mass into space It's, it's just a strong choice of course, having gone and made all the concessions and the allowances for the thuds, I suddenly realised that maybe having the ability to throttle my boosters might be a little bit of an advantageous situation to find myself in. So liquid boosters it was. We were butting up against the part limit, but I went and iterated over a few liquid fuel designs here. Ended up going with a two booster affair with a more filled out central column. And of course, a couple of things just at the bottom, because I know from past experience that when my rockets start getting this long, we can have a bit of an aerodynamic drag on the nose of my craft. And that tends to 
to pull us over somewhere around the speed of sound. So far we have achieved land science, air science and suborbital science. Now is the time for us to try and go for that orbit. Once again Bob Kerman in the hot seat. We're flying up with a liquid booster rocket. We're making our way to about 10 kilometers before trying to turn our way over to a 45 degree angle. Unfortunately Bob lacking the piloting skills to actually do so and now I'm trying to judge how high my Apple apps is. My standard way of getting into orbit in Kerbal Space Program is to boost up at about a 45 degree angle, getting my Apple apps that is the highest part of my orbit, somewhere about 75 kilometers, just over the top of the atmosphere. That is because I then like to come along with whatever my second stage is and use that to circularize. And the most efficient places to do that is indeed at your Apple apps. Looking at the data in front of me, it looks like I very slightly overshot, maybe ending up with a final apoapsis of about 110 kilometers. That's okay, that's fine. There was a small staging event there as we threw away the main booster stage that got us up and out of Kerbin's atmosphere and into what I call the space stage, the final bit of the very spacecraft at the very top of the rocket. In future missions, I'm very likely to have another stage in between that's going to take this tiny spacecraft to another planet or something like that. But at the moment, this guy's job is just to maneuver around. Looking around, trying to figure out whether I I am going up or down right now just just so I know what's going on but really we're just going to go around to our Apple apps confirm that we have indeed achieved orbit and from our Apple apps we're going to then burn back down I'm trying to land back somewhere near the KSC maybe at the desert airfield if I could but really I just want to get Bob back safe a lot of things could go wrong during re-entry a lot of things could go wrong during just trying to get my orbit down uh, we could run out of fuel at any moment especially if someone was to make some silly decisions like later on. I, mean, I don't know what that would be. Anyway, we are back inside the atmosphere. We are down below uh, 75 kilometers. You can see the needle on the atmospheric readout at the top there is started to come down. Having a look at the map, I am indeed very close to the desert airstrip and I'm wondering whether I can spend some fuel to get over there. Of course, whilst I'm trying to think about it, I uh, end up pointing my rocket in the wrong direction and waste uh, literally half the fuel that I had whilst also spinning wildly out of control in the atmosphere and losing the temperature probe that we had attached to this craft. It was uh, not the best day in space, it has to be mentioned. I'm now trying to use the aerodynamic surface of the spacecraft itself to try and push myself over towards the desert airfield. It doesn't look like that I'm going to be able to turn myself over far enough and I'm wondering whether we're actually going to come down on top of the temple that is located within that little hollow of the mountains there. I have failed to notice that my uh, orbital speed is is going upwards. It has an upwards velocity. This means I am no longer going down towards the planet Kerbin. I'm in fact headed back to orbit. If you've ever seen any old space shows and they're like, if, they, if the Apollo astronauts did not enter at the right angle, they would have skipped off back into space. This is what ha would have happened. I don't know why that was such a bad thing for the Apollo guys. I mean, could, did they not, not have food or something? Maybe the ablator was already spent? I'm not sure. If you, if you know why that would have been such a terrible thing for the Apollo program, please let, let me know. Let me know. Maybe oxygen or carbon dioxide levels? I, I don't know. There's, there's many things you can think of. Being the functional immortal that Bob Kerman is, all he needs to do is sit back and enjoy this particular wonderful sunrise. With orbital dynamics being the beautiful thing that they are, as he started in the atmosphere, thus he is coming back to the atmosphere. Once you go a full circle around the orbit, you do come back to where you started from, unless you do something to change it as you are traveling around. Uh, we are burning off most of our speed in the atmosphere. The friction that is being caused between the hull of our spacecraft and the atmosphere around us is doing a quite a wonderful job of slowing us down. I'd just like to point out we have practically lost connection, top left according to Comnet. This means if there was a robot taking control right now, we would be flying ballistically, we wouldn't be able to give it any commands. Thankfully we have a Kerbal on board and that doesn't matter because they just take direct control. I was kind of desperately trying to steer myself somewhere other than in the water because we have uh, water science already and it would be nice just to get either badlands or grassland or just you know anywhere other than the water that we already have but unfortunately i seem to have found myself the biggest patch of water available on the planet i don't know specifically whether that is the case but i was uh, having a look whilst we were coming down and I, I really felt like it was one of the largest bits we're into the uh, final moments of the descent here bob just kicking back and waiting uh, the orbit has been achieved we've actually crossed all the early game major kerbal milestones here at Twitchy Space Industries, we are proud to announce the start of our commercial space operations. It has been a long, hard journey getting our orbital certification. 
But with the hard work and dedication of the brightest minds on the planet, we are ready to welcome our most precious cargo. You. Flying with Twitchy Space Industries may result in harm to life property or your impact on the timelines. If you do choose to fly, Twitchy cannot be held liable for loss of limb, lunch, locomotion, or lactation. So what does this mean for our space program? Well, of course, it means tourist contracts. Tito Kerman, he's got a lot of money and he wants to go to space. And who are we to reject his offer? We're going to take the Herschel, the last craft we did to get up into orbit. And we're just going to take the science off and slam down an extra pod on the underside. What, what more of a system did we want? The majority of the footage for this episode was recorded during stream. And my audience was helping me with the naming process. If you'd like to come along and help out, laugh at my incompetence, or even just sit there and watch what's going on, do feel free to come along Tuesday 6 till 8 UK time if you hit that big red subscribe button YouTube will let you know when the next episode is or even when I go live we have uh, not missed a stream in years and years today Valentina Kerman recognizable by her purple hair on my safe file is in the mark 1 command pod flying a Tito Kerman in the KV-1 onion re-entry module Tito Kerman is best known for his enthusiasm for space but is also an investment banker where he made his millions and is willing to pay to be the first Kerbal tourist there is. Valentina, of course, following the space program's recommended ascent profile, we have gone up about 45 degrees for most of the flight, spent as much of our lower stage fuel as we can. I'm currently holding on to the stage because it's got quite a bit of mass, and that mass will help me punch through the air so we don't feel so much air resistance. Up at the very top levels, I throw it away, and I noticed that um, I didn't get my apple apps high enough. We are trying to circularize just inside that atmosphere. That means that not only are we going to have a little bit of drag on us whilst we're trying to circularize. This also means if we are going to meet the conditions for a full orbit on the other side up at our apoaps, we are going to have to try and lift our periapsis, the lowest part of our orbit, up and out of the atmosphere. You can see on our contract window in the top right, we still do not quite meet all the qualifications that are needed. That, of course, is due, due to our periaps. Later on, when we upgrade the tracking center and the astronaut complex, we'll be able to see the numbers on the screen. But at the moment, there we go. We have done it. I've gone around and I've done all the things just by my knowledge of orbital mechanics. Now it says we need to wait four hours, but but no. Let's go get on with some commercial activity. First things first, looking at the top of my screen, 41 science points. That's a little bit irritating, if I'm to be honest with you, because we only need 45 to unlock our next science packet. So we are going to go to the VAB. We are going to make a uh, modification to our first science vehicle, and we're going to make the second science vehicle. This is a VTOL-capable rocket. I laugh because look at it. It is literally a bare minimum of rocket parts with some iron girders underneath to try and land on top of. But let's see how it goes. We have put Bill Gurman in charge because the engineer, he didn't get out, and he needs Needs to get himself some experience points so that when we do need him he actually has the uh, the the on the work knowledge he needs to be able to repair stuff all right we are headed for the vab i cockily on stream said all right guys let's aim for the top of the vab vab building but there is one thing that i didn't take note of it is the bare minimum of rocket parts that's right i have just noticed and i'm panicking about the fact that we're just about to run out of fuel thankfully i managed to get down low enough that we bounce off the legs i, I get bill to grab ourselves a little bit of science and go oh, maybe I slightly over equipped this craft all those science experiments are not the fuel to take it anywhere more useful than that one particular crash site oh well that works out well for me we get just enough science to knock us over the 45 point total that I was looking for and we go have a look inside the research and development I was on and ahhing very very hard about whether to get the planes and I still to this moment do not know whether I made the right choice by actually going for more science experiments with the plane we could have gone off to other biomes and we got more science to buy more science with. But of course, the more science experiments give us more science to get the science with. I I'm conflicted to this point. Do you think I made the right choice, science over airplanes? Let me know. I, I literally, I just, I don't know. Anyway, one thing that I am sure about is the fact that that last mission cost us money and we didn't make any money. So we're going to go back to Gene Kerman in the mission control here and we're going to have a look through some of these contracts. I forgot that actually we've only got space for one more contract because we can have a maximum of two and with the tourism contract but we're waiting four hours to complete we can only take one. A quick redesign of the second sciences doesn't take very long at all you know that's kind of the definition of a quick redesign and all we need to do is put the Juno engine on top. I would have made some sort of plane as we got given the Juno engine contract but unfortunately it doesn't actually have any intake valve on it so it would have immediately flamed out with a lack of oxidizer. Immediately upon low 
exploding. We noticed the grotesque, hideous form of Jebediah Kerman sat there. I really meant to send Bill out, but I thought, why not? Let's let the PR darling out. Let's get a little bit of a photo shoot out there. The weird, psychopathic Kerbal needs his moment in the limelight, and we'll let him have it with such a low-risk job here. Like, Don't you think it's a bit weird that Jebediah is always blowing stuff up, yet somehow still keeps getting praised all the time? Like, I have, I have never seen so many prototype vehicles end up in a discarded of ruinous wreck because of this Kerbal. How many hotshot rookies could have done wonders for the space program but could not even get into the rocket because Jebediah and his massive inflated ego, an ego so large I'm surprised this capsule can still even float, is sat in the rocket first. Anyway, mission success, we got some science, we got some money, and those ravenous lenses at the paparazzi got the shots that they required. Remember Valentina and Tito Kerman up in orbit? They've been up there for some time, and with the powers of time acceleration, we can make our way to meet that time requirement to get this contract looking all good. Now, of course, I want to get these guys back to the Kerbal Space Center, and that's currently at night time, so I'm not about that. We're going to time warp our way forwards enough to bring the Kerbal Space Center, those little markers on the globe there, in a two alignment with a sunrise and now I'm going to bring the spaceship around to being just over the top of the desert quite easily pointed out this time with the other desert airfield unfortunately a sunrise landing means that we're going to be performing our retrograde burn here in the darkness that is a side effect from going eastwards to take advantage of the Kerbin's rotation to help me with my launch it's all big decisions being made that have big consequences but it does mean that we get to go around in the darkness and wait for sun or to happen and whilst that is happening I would like to take a moment to thank my Patreons these wonderful people are the guys and girls that are trying to make sure that I can continue this endeavor despite the fact that I have just recently cast my own personal life into turmoil by taking on an astrophysics university course when it comes to the decision making process of where my time gets spent these are the people that will make sure I can justify my crippling Kerbal space program addiction so big thanks Jill for keeping me in the pilot seat right now as we are coming in for entry I'm taking a moment to have a look at the atmospheric effects that are going on over the continent there and I was wondering whether this amount of scattering was actually happening in real life it seems to be a very white haze going over there so I went and had a look on Google I looked up a few pictures of the earth from the ISS but I think you can see that we have a bit of a problem because if you look at this one the haze is there and if you look at this one it's not so I'm not sure which one's more natural maybe one of these has been like a doctor to make it look more green? I don't know. But these are the thoughts that I wonder about when coming in for re-entry. And talking about re-entry, we have started getting a load of plasma heating around the hole. And indeed, the Orion, sorry, the onion capsule underneath has taken on a rather blackened appearance. Uh, this is because I took all the ablative material away from it in an effort to save weight. And this was fine because we're, we're only coming from low curb in orbit. There really is not a lot of heat to deal with here. No more than the engine can deal with so we're going to be coming in this direction one thing that i did notice that i had neglected to do was add more parachutes we are coming down with a much larger spacecraft this time double the weight as we now have two capsules that we're trying to support and we only have the one parachute the one parachute that has only been rated to lower down the mk1 capsule I'm not sure if there's a way to go back and check my casual playthroughs, but I do know for the vast majority of my Kerbal Space Program career modes that I've either done a video or a stream for, I have killed my first Taurus. This is not a tradition I want to carry on today, so we're going to see if we can't save them. We are coming down heavy, and for that reason I've decided to keep some mass on the bottom of my craft. I know, sounds counterintuitive, but what we're actually using it for is a litho brake cushion. We are coming down pretty hard, but I think we can use the crumple zone of the rocket underneath us to take away the vast majority of the energy in this impact. And yes, we do it. We managed to not blow up our tourist. Round of applause, everyone. And finally, a new tradition I'd like to start for our episodes. Let's go over everything we did today. With going into the motion control, we can see that we got ourselves a whole bunch of washing machine science done. We got ourselves into orbit. We did ourselves a tourism trip and even got ourselves some test these parts here done. In the research and development, we've opened a whole two entire tiers of technology and started working on our science down on the third tier. Probably should have gone for the plane part 
parts, but that's fine. Got ourselves some scan set parts sat at the end there. They're the only modded parts that I believe I've got even in the entire game, but they're definitely the only modded parts I have opened up today. Finally checking the final frontier. This really is the uh, the bit that I'm most interested in. Looking at the ribbons awarded to the Kerbal. We're going to go through it quite quickly, but uh, the high points here. Bill landing of 1% fuel. That's pretty good. So the scientist Bob got all the first. The first flight, the first orbit, the first landing, the first EVA, first everything. Uh, Valentina got the uh, passenger ribbon and uh, a few of the science ones, which is a little surprising. And of course, Jeb, he did some stuff, I suppose. But with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed what you saw, please do consider giving me a thumbs up or maybe commenting on what we really enjoyed. I will see you guys next time where we are going to continue on with this career mode, moving on maybe towards a manual orbit, definitely putting some communication satellites around the moon. But I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!